Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. I'm Travis Wright, Group Product Manager for the SQL Server and Azure Data Engineering team at Microsoft. Today I'm excited to introduce to you SQL Server 2019, the most recent release of SQL Server. SQL Server is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. That's quite a while. If I look back on the early days of my career, I started on SQL Server 2000. In that 25 year history, SQL Server has really come a long ways. It's really expanded to meet the needs of our customers over time, as the different types of data that customers need to collect and process and query has changed, as there's been more and different kinds of database engine requirements that have come along. So let's take a trip back down memory lane for a moment and just kind of look at where SQL Server has come from, and then we'll take a look at where SQL Server is going next with SQL Server 2019. Let's start with SQL Server 2008. SQL Server 2008 is actually out of extended support just this year. If you fast forward a bit to look at SQL Server 2012 and 2014, we really made some big improvements in terms of performance and high availability by introducing always-on availability groups for high availability and in-memory capabilities to really boost the performance of your databases. In SQL Server 2016 and 17, we really changed the game a lot by introducing some new capabilities in SQL Server to store and query JSON and Graph as well. And we also did something very surprising by bringing SQL Server to Linux and containers in SQL Server 2017. In SQL Server 2019, we're changing the game yet again and really expanding and redefining the definition of what SQL Server is. SQL Server, of course, is still the relational database it was 25 years ago. You can still store your data in SQL Server and query it in the same way that you always have. But at the same time, we're redefining SQL Server and extending it well beyond just the relational database space. So let's take a look at what we're doing in SQL Server 2019. In SQL Server 2019, we're giving you access to query and process data outside of the boundary of a traditional SQL Server instance. By taking Polybase, a feature we first introduced in SQL Server 2016, to the next level. Polybase allows you to create a data virtualization layer across multiple different data sources, such as Oracle, other SQL Server instances, Teradata, MongoDB, and much more. We've also taken HDFS and Spark and built it in the box. So now with SQL Server, you can process and store data at the petabyte scale and process and store data that's also even unmanaged or unstructured data. You can use SQL Server with virtually any programming language. You can run it on pretty much any platform now. With SQL Server 2019, you can run it on Windows, of course. You can also run it on Linux, on Red Hat, on SUSE, or Ubuntu. You can run it in a container. You can run it on Kubernetes. You can run it on a different processor architectures now. With Azure SQL Database Edge, you can run it on an ARM64 device like a Raspberry Pi. And you can run it in the cloud in Azure SQL Database, or you can run it on-premises, or you can run it in other public clouds. There's a lot of versatility there. You can use SQL Server wherever it suits you the best. SQL Server 2019 continues to expand our industry-leading performance. SQL Server has established itself for many years now as the number one in terms of OLTP performance with TPC benchmarks, and as the number one in terms of data warehouse performance with TPC H benchmarks. We've also led the industry by having the fewest number of vulnerabilities reported out of any of the major database engines across the last eight years, according to the National Institute of Standards and Technology. So let's take a closer look at just some of the highlights of SQL Server 2019. Let's start with some improvements we're making in the performance space. So first of all, persistent memory is a new technology that's entering the hardware market. We've taken advantage of persistent memory to really boost the performance. You don't have to make any changes to your application and you can store your data in persistent memory for faster performance. Secondly, for intelligent query processing, we've really expanded the family of features here, as you can see in this chart, to include lots of new ways where the query optimizer can learn over time, based on the execution of how queries go, how future executions of those queries can be improved, boosting the performance of your applications over time without you having to change anything in your applications. And lastly, we've put the tempdb in memory for even faster performance of the temp database. Next, let's take a look at some improvements we're making in security and compliance. First of all, especially with GDPR, customers are 
faced with even more regulatory requirements that they have to meet. To make that easier, we provide data classification capabilities out of the box. You can point the data classification engine at your database and it will automatically discover the different types of data you have in your database, such as PCI data or GDPR data, and automatically classify that and produce reports for you like you see in this screenshot here. And you can define your own classification rules as well. Next, in terms of security, we've improved Always Encrypted, our client-side encryption technology that allows you to separate the encryption from the database. So that way, the database administrators cannot decrypt the data in the database. That allows you to separate duties here between the database administrators and the application developers and users. And lastly, just as an example here of improvements that we're making is we have also added support for performing the encryption of all the data inside of Enclaves. Now in the space of developer and DBA tools, hopefully you've all learned about and tried Azure Data Studio, our new cross-platform open source tool for all types of data personas, whether you're a database administrator, a database engineer, or a data scientist. This tool is available for you to download for free and use, and it is designed to be multi-database engine, so you can use it not just with SQL Server, but also with SQL Server in the cloud, such as Azure SQL Database, or with Azure SQL Data Warehouse, also with other database engines like Postgres and MySQL. One of the improvements that people are most excited about in Azure Data Studio is the notebook experience. Notebooks allows you to create a file that contains markdown as well as code cells. In the markdown, you can describe some analysis that you're doing or steps that should be performed. And then in the code cells that are intermingled with those markdown cells, you can have some code that you or somebody else can execute. And we have notebooks for T-SQL, for PowerShell, for Python, for R, for Python. And you can run it either locally or you can run it in Spark. It's a very powerful way to sort of collaborate with other people by capturing this information in notebooks. And these notebooks can be used to capture samples or maybe some standard operating procedures or troubleshooting guides and share those with other people through the Git integration that we have built into Azure Data Studio. And lastly, we've integrated some really cool technology from Microsoft Research called Sandance, which allows you to do ad hoc data visualization and exploration using some really cool charting capabilities right there inside of Azure Data Studio. So definitely go grab Azure Data Studio if you haven't already. It's a super powerful tool and the innovation is coming there on a monthly basis as we release uh, every month for Azure Data Studio. So we continue to double down on our, you know, sort of new approach to how we look at different platforms for SQL Server. In SQL Server 2017, we introduced support for Linux, but in SQL Server 2019, we're taking that to the next step by creating even greater feature parity between SQL Server on Windows and SQL Server on Linux. By bringing Polybase, ML Services, Distributed Transaction Coordinator, and Replication to Linux. And that pretty much checks off all the boxes for the database engine features, so you have near 100% compatibility between SQL Server on Windows and SQL Server on Linux. In partnership with Red Hat, we've also created RHEL-based container images, which are available on the Microsoft Container Registry, and you can discover them in the Red Hat Container Catalog as well. And lastly, in preview right now, we have support for always-on availability groups in Kubernetes, so that you can get the benefits of having always-on availability groups for scale-out reads or for high availability, living right there on top of the Kubernetes layer underneath. And lastly, probably the most significant area of improvements and sort of just spreading out the tent of SQL Server, if you will, to handle new types of scenarios is the improvements that we're making in Polybase and data virtualization, as I was mentioning at the beginning, where we can create a data virtualization layer across many different data sources like Oracle, other SQL Server instances, and uh, Teradata. And that allows us to bring together data across multiple data sources at query time and really minimize the need for using ETL as a way to integrate our data together. Nobody likes building and maintaining ETL pipelines. So we want to give you an, another option that you can use in addition to ETL for how you integrate your data together. In SQL Server 2019, we've introduced a new pattern for how we deploy SQL Server by 
introducing a, a new pattern called Big Data Clusters. And Big Data Clusters allows you to deploy a SQL Server instance with all of its typical capabilities, along with HDFS and Spark in one integrated solution that's deployed on Kubernetes. It provides you the ability to take SQL Server and do all the things that you do with SQL Server, but then easily integrate that together with HDFS and Spark so that you can do queries over high volume data that may scale out a thousand times greater than you could possibly store in a SQL Server today, up into the tens or even hundreds of petabytes of data, as well as being able to store and query and process unstructured data like video files or audio files in HDFS. And you have the benefit of having the Spark engine there for data preparation activities or for doing machine learning model training or operationalization of those models inside of Spark. And so by Microsoft providing an integrated solution and supporting that one integrated solution in big data clusters, you get a shared scalable data lake built on HDFS that either SQL Server or Spark can access. And this really provides you a complete AI platform for doing everything from the ingestion of the data by storing it in HDFS or in SQL Server, and then doing data preparation tasks using either Spark or SQL Server, and then doing uh, machine learning model training using either the built-in machine learning libraries in Spark, or by uh, using the machine learning services built into the SQL Server master instance, and then you can operationalize those either in the Spark runtime by doing batch machine learning scoring, or you could do it inside of a stored procedure in SQL Server, for example. Or we have a way where you can actually take a model and automatically wrap it up in a REST API container and provision that container on top of the big data cluster. So that it's easy for application developers to call in and use that container as a way to submit some data, have it scored, and give it a scored value back. So it makes for really a complete AI platform end-to-end -to, -end to be able to do everything you need to do around AI and machine learning. So hopefully that gives you a quick introduction into SQL Server 2019. This is really just one video in a series of videos on the SQL 2019 channel that you see linked here at the bottom of the screen. And we really hope that you have a chance to go through all these videos. We hope to publish maybe around 100 videos that go into lots of details about everything that's new in SQL Server 2019. And if you have any feedback, you know, please post that in the comments below and subscribe to the channel. So thanks for joining us today to learn more about SQL Server 2019. And we'll see you out there at the next event or SQL Saturday. Thank you.